Yeah, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so hi. Um, today we are going to talk about resistance and powering. Uh, the professor just ended the class about uh, ship resistance. Uh, in this uh, lecture, we will talk about power estimation. It's a very, very simple topic about how power is used in ship design, in ship engine design, and ship engine choosing. So recapping what uh, we just learned, major resistance components. There are two major components of resistance in a ship. Yeah. Do not see the, the screen. We, we just see the black screen. So can you try, try the sharing again? It's OK now. Is it working? No. No. It's not. no. I'll, I'll just keep it like this. Is this working now? Yeah. Yeah. So major resistance component. Uh, there are two major components of resistance in a ship. One is the frictional resistance, which is to overcome the viscosity of the of water. And then we have residual resi uh, resistance, which is basically to overcome what is made by uh, waves. Um, so in a ship, a smooth hull surface will minimize any frictional resistance, uh, which is from the viscosity and a good hull form will minimize the residual resistance. Uh, whenever a ship is slow, the frictional resistance is three or four times uh, approximately larger uh, than residual resistance because uh, the ship has to put more effort to cut through water. And in relatively high speed ships, because it has a lot of momentum uh, in general, the two resistances, that is the frictional resistance and the residual resistance will be equal approximately. So we have a video. I just share the video. International Maritime Organization has mandated adoption of the Energy Efficiency Design Index for all vessels contracted since 2013. IMO also resolved to reduce the noise generated by a ship to 3 decibels within 10 years and to 10 decibels within 30 years to conserve marine mammals and fish. Accordingly, the global shipbuilding industry is making all-out efforts to improve the propulsion efficiency and protect the marine environment. Dr. Hanshin Sol's team at Korea Research Institute of Ships and Ocean Engineering has world-class technologies in this field. Based on systematic researches on improvement of propulsion efficiency and noise reduction, Dr. Sol's team developed innovative technologies that are indispensable for development of eco-friendly ships. Only 70% of the power of ship propeller is used for propulsion, and the rest disappears due to friction, heat loss, vortex, and so on. In order to increase the propulsion efficiency of the ship, it is necessary to minimize the loss by improving the design technique of the propeller and developing the high-efficiency propeller appendages. Various types of strong cavitation occur in the propeller. This is the main cause of noise and vibration of ship, loss of propulsion efficiency, and propeller and rudder erosion. Dr. Sol's team has managed to not only enhance propulsion efficiency, but reduce radiated noise using a technology that improves the propeller cavitation. The existing ship propeller hub has a round cup-shaped cover its sleek shape, contrary to expectations, creates strong vortex flow and forms a strong hub vortex cavitation. 
In an attempt to inhibit the formation of vortex, the team developed a new propeller cap in a different shape called K-cap. It can improve the propulsion efficiency while efficiently inhibiting formation of hub vortex cavitation. K-cap and fit is a combination of K-cap and a simple shaped plate. The fin attached helps absorb the rotational energy behind the propeller and removes the propeller hub vortex cavitation while improving the propulsion efficiency. It reduces propeller broadband noise and prevents rudder erosion by completely eliminating hub vortex cavitation. With an improved efficiency of the propeller, it showed excellent performance in the model test results. The Criso Vortex Generator is a structure built in front of the propeller. It controls the flow of fluid into the propeller to improve the propulsion efficiency and reduce the noise and vibration of the ship. Other conventional energy-saving devices are installed in the form of a fin or duct close to the propeller. With such a structure, the propulsion efficiency can be improved by the pre-swirl effect, but propeller cavitation can be increased, causing erosion to the propeller. In addition, existing energy-saving technologies have the form of large structures, so they make the maintenance difficult and show structural problems. On the other hand, the technology developed by the research team improves the propulsion efficiency by attaching the vortex generator to the front hull of the propeller and reduces the underwater radiated noise of the ship by improving characteristics of the propeller cavitation. Thanks to its relatively small size and simple shapes, KVG can be easily applied to most ships with little side effect. This technology has excellent performance in improvement of propulsion efficiency and underwater radiated noise reduction. In the case of large commercial vessels, more than $700,000 a year in operating costs can be saved. It is an eco-friendly, high-efficiency ship technology. It has excellent structural stability, enhances propulsion efficiency, improves the cavitation phenomenon of the propeller, reduces noise and vibration of the ship and prevents erosion of the propeller and rudder. Especially these technologies are applicable not only to new build ships but also to retrofit of existing ships to eco-friendly high efficiency ships. In relation to the technologies, five of the eight domestic patent applications have been registered and international patents have been filed. As the IMO regulations on greenhouse gas emissions and regulations on marine environment protection are strengthened, the demand for related technologies is explosively increasing, and the economic value of this technology will be highly recognized for a long time. We 어, 기존 선박뿐만 아니라 신조선에 모두 적용할 수 있고 그래서 국내에 많은 조선소 해운사로부터 현재 관심을 받고 있습니다. 그리고 조만간 상용화를 앞두고 있습니다. It has been recognized as the highest level technology to achieve for the development of eco-friendly vessels. Thus it will contribute to humanitarian efforts to preserve the marine environment and provide a new growth engine for the stagnant domestic shipbuilding industry. Ultimately it will be recognized as a proud science and technology research achievement. So, what this video essentially shows is how one way how energy is lost uh, in terms of the transmission process through the engine to the propeller and how there are new technologies that are being developed to increase um, this efficiency, to reduce uh, any loss of energy and to uh, generally have more power available to the ship. So uh, continuing on what we, what we saw, uh, the efficiency of the engine is definitely not 100% and it's not very high as well. So what happens to the energy? 
not all the energy that goes into the propeller shaft reaches the propeller. Small fraction to overcome friction in the shaft bearings and the seals uh, that keep water from seeping in is lost and propellers convert torsional energy into thrust. So as you can see on the diagram on the right, um, from fuel energy, which is 100% energy that is given uh, in the engine, 30% is lost to exhaust gases. 27% is used in cooling systems, 3% is uh, lost in friction and power takeoff, 1% is lost in the transmission and shaft, 15% uh, is lost in the propeller, and the net thrusting energy that is uh, that is left after all the deductions, after all the uh, losses is approximately 25%. Now talking about the power definitions uh, in, in terms of ship engines and ship building, there are mainly five uh, power uh, estimations definitions that are used, uh, namely effective power, thrust power, delivered power, shaft power, and brake power. Um, the formulas for each of them are on the screen and you can refer them later through the slides. Uh, talking about them, effective power in the calm water is the power required to move the ship at a given speed in the absence of a propeller action. Thrust power is the power produced by the propeller. Um, delivered power, as it says, is the power delivered to the propeller in calm water can be expressed as a function of thrust power. Uh, shaft power is basically if um, a ship has a gearbox, it's the power that is there in the gearbox after it's connected to the engine. Uh, brake power means the power out at the crankshaft coming out of the main engine. If you put all of these powers in order from uh, the smallest to the greatest, um, effective power has the least uh, value and brake power has the highest value, as you can see in the, uh, in the order at the bottom. Talking about uh, continuing the power estimation, we can calculate effective horsepower, we can calculate uh, different efficiencies, uh, the propulsive coefficient, uh, the hull efficiency, uh, we can, uh, so the uh, formulas are very simple, uh, prop propulsive coefficient is effective power divided by delivered power, um, which is equal to the product of um, open water efficiency, uh, the relative rotative efficiency, and uh, the th uh, hull efficiency. So through all of this, through all energy losses, energy consumption, uh, efficiency, and uh, everything, how do, how do ship manufacturers have uh, their selection process, uh, procedure for engine? So it begins with estimating frictional horsepower, uh, which is the motion in viscous fluid. Estimate, uh, then they estimate the wave making horsepower, that is energy that must be supplied continuously by the ship to the wave system created on the surface of the water. Then you need to add a power requirement increment for uh, appendages, eddy resistance. Then the sum of all the above mentioned power is the estimated effective horsepower. Um, then they compute the delivered horsepower and then add a few percentage for shaft losses. This is just to get over all the losses, all the inefficiencies in the system. Then there is a power margin that is added. Uh, it's usually 15 to 25%. And this is the value that is finally used to select an engine from the engine manufacturer's, manufacturer's catalog. Talking about submerged bodies, for a deeply immersed body moving at a constant speed, there is no free surface. There's no wave formation and therefore no wave making resistance. So in an ideal fluid without any viscosity, the body experiences no resistance. And in surface ships, a ship moving on the water surface experiences resistance forces in the same way as does the submerged body because part of the ship is also submerged. In addition, the presence of the free surface adds wave making resistance. The waves must overcome gravity, which will absorb the energy. So this goes back to slide number one, where we, where, where we were talking about how there are two resistances, the, visc uh, the, vis uh, the viscous fluid that needs to be cut through and um, the gravity that needs to be uh, overcome. Then what happens to the energy? As, as we saw in the diagram before, friction in the shaft bearings and in the seals take out one to 2% of uh, the entire energy from the engine and propellers convert torsional energy into thrust. And it's very rare that it's more than 70% efficient. Uh, propeller hull interactions also um, is very important in this. Uh, talking about weight gain, the propeller operates within a relatively slow moving water, which enables regaining of some of the energy. And thrust deduction is the propeller reduces the water pressure on the stern. More work is required to overcome this pressure induced suction. Now, estimating horsepower. 
So one of the most challenging responsibilities of naval architects is selecting an engine that will drive a proposed ship at the right speed. Uh, so horsepower is basically a unit of measurement of the power of the engine. It's used in all types of transportation. A formula is very simple. It's force multiplied by speed and the, and the unit is uh, HP horsepower, which is you know, equivalent to 735 watts. So the horsepower is, uh, we saw the procedure to calculate all the different power outputs, adding the uh, margins, adding the losses, and then we get the horsepower through which the selection of the ship engine is done. So then there are brake horsepower, which is diesel or gasoline engines, and then shaft horsepower, which is used for steam turbine engines, and the BHP and SHP are identical in a direct drive diesel engine. Talking about the marine engine market, it's basically uh, the market where all the engines for ships are sold. It's not as big of a market. I think it's because one engine can be used for a very long time. And uh, it's a, and to build a ship, it takes a very long time in itself. That's why uh, it's a very slow growing market as well. As you can see in 2018, the market was $12.05 billion. And by 2026, uh, which is up eight years, it has. It will be. It is projected to be uh, to grow by just five billion dollars, um, and U.S. itself has a five point one three uh, billion dollar. Oh, sorry. The Asia Asia Pacific uh, marine market size is roughly five point one three billion dollars because it has uh, a lot of countries, a lot of trade routes, and a lot of water. So, um, the Asia Pacific marine market holds a majority uh, stake in the entire global market of it. Uh, I could not find any different video uh, adding to the slides or adding to what the professor had said previously, but I found these two websites. Uh, one was describing power definitions and the one was and the other one was describing engine selection. Uh, I've submitted this uh, uh, presentation on the Kakao group so you guys can go through the links. These are pretty helpful. And thank you for listening. All right.